So what I've set up is I'm setting up a GoFundMe. Ha! <laughs> Gay! Actually, no. It's been a while since I've done this kind of video. So let's do the entire thing. Before we get into what I'm doing, I want to take a second and tell you guys a little bit about my story. No. I worked for a major corporation for the past eight years before I went YouTube full time. Yeah. So, what about it? About five years ago, I was diagnosed with sarcoidosis. Okay. Why am I supposed to care? Everyone, and I do mean everyone, has health problems these days, you know? Unless it's someone I actually care about and play games with every day, I really couldn't care less. Neither would you if the situation was reversed and I was dying of sarcoidosis. So honestly, like I said, who cares? Also, you're the last kind of person that needs a GoFundMe campaign. Maybe if you were like a homeless veteran who lost both his legs, yeah, maybe you could get a GoFundMe campaign. That would make sense. But those kinds of people actually try to get stuff done. They usually don't spend their time on the internet begging for donations just because they can't get that YouTube money anymore. My money, spending habits, stuff like that. So let me give you a little background. I was used to making a certain amount of money before I lost my job. I made eighty to $100,000 a year and uh, I lost my job because I was calling off too much work because of my FMLA and they found another reason to remove me. And I was used to spending a certain amount of money. I bought an iPhone 7 or whatever, I pre-ordered it and I have nice equipment and stuff like that for YouTube and most of this stuff I had before I even started YouTube. And I know a couple of people are like, well you just bought an iPhone 7, you just did this. Okay, honestly, like I said, who cares? This is America. Everyone gets fired for the stupidest bullshit. My uncle was a pharmacist for CVS and he got fired for doing too much work. He was literally reprimanded for showing up to work too much. Actually, he didn't get fired, he just quit, because that's some bullshit. But still, same thing. But the thing about that is, my uncle hasn't worked for five years. And during that time, he's never had to go on YouTube and beg for money and sympathy. You know why he hasn't had to do that? I'll tell you why he hasn't had to do that. Here's the secret. My uncle actually has common sense. He actually saves us money for a rainy day, and he doesn't waste it on stupid shit. I mean, for crying out loud, you said you made eighty to $100,000 a year. Most people will never see that kind of salary. And you didn't have the common sense to think, maybe I should save a little bit of money in case shit hits the fan. No, you didn't. And that's your problem. Nobody else's. I never thought I would have to make a video like this. It's almost embarrassing. <laughs> Gay! Now the great thing about this situation is I have a YouTube channel and I have tons of people that help support me on a daily basis. Translation, because of my bad spending habits, I wasted all my money. Oh, I know. Instead of downsizing my life in more ways than one, I'll just beg to my subscribers to bail me out. After all, I make clickbait SEO Call of Duty videos. It's not like I had any real sense of self-respect to begin with. I'm scared. Views are low right now for Call of Duty channels across the board. My buddies, Hollow, Chaos, everyone. It's a rough time. Well, yeah, of course, because your stuff is boring, to be frank. It's clickbait and supply drop videos. You're eventually going to run out of 12-year-olds that are going to want to watch that stuff. Of course your views are down. In fact, you and other channels like yourself are the reason why Call of Duty is dead on YouTube, to begin with. Back in 2009, 2010, there was a lot more interesting stuff to watch. Now it's just, let me read stuff off of Twitter and talk out of my ass about what's going to be in the next Call of Duty. Or let me talk out of my ass about what's in this trailer or whatever. Or let me just make a video unboxing a whole bunch of supply drops and doing fake reactions. Of course nobody's watching Call of Duty on YouTube anymore. You guys killed it. Some may say, go find a real job, you know, work a real job and do YouTube, which I may start doing. I may start doing. Unless I get some money from my subscribers, then forget about doing a real job. Real jobs are for plebs. But I had this hope and this dream just to make it till November, December, January when I know 
Call of Duty channels are blooming. The whole thought process behind it was like, okay, you just gotta make it, you know, till November, till December when things get better on YouTube because that's what when it does for Call of Duty channels. Erm, um, you do realize the obvious flaw behind your plan, yes? Wait, what's that? You don't? Okay, I'll tell you what's wrong. Call of Duty is dead. Infinite Warfare is dead on arrival. You are not gonna make any money from doing Infinite Warfare videos. Period. I don't even care if people say this every year. Infinite Warfare is gonna be the last Call of Duty. So even if you somehow get your subscribers to bail you out, you'll be begging for money come next year. So what I've set up is I'm setting up a GoFundMe. You know, when I started the donation thing, I was asking. I wasn't forcing anybody to. Anybody who wants to support me, you know, I looked at it as a Patreon like any other YouTuber does. Many YouTubers do it, you know, help support me in my time of need. And that's basically what a Patreon does, except for you do it for content and you get access to stuff. And maybe I should have set it up that way, but, but I just want to be... Just because you say no one has to doesn't excuse you from criticism. You're still e-begging at the end of the day, and that is extremely frowned upon. It wouldn't matter whether you set up Patreon either. Many people use that as a medium for e-begging, because in most cases, it is a form of e-begging. And in your case, it still would be e-begging. It also really doesn't matter whether you admit you messed up, and that you were going to return your iPhone, and the other expensive stuff you bought, because, frankly, e-begging for that kind of money is just frankly stupid, and also just despicable especially from a big YouTuber. I really see it not any different from panhandling in real life in the streets, okay? Imagine in real life, some guy walks up to you and says, can you give me some money? I'm kind of broke right now. And you say, no, why should I give you money? And then they go like, well, I'm kind of broke right now because I spent all my money on an expensive iPhone 7 and expensive equipment to do YouTube videos. And now I can't afford to fund my expensive lifestyle anymore. And then you go like, why the fuck should I give you money? That's your problem, you fucking idiot! Why'd you spend all that money? That's exactly what would happen in real life, and you know it. I could go on, but if I did, we'd be here forever. And I don't think I'm that good. Granted, if you got this far, you probably think I'm the shit and want me to continue. If you didn't, you probably think I'm just shit. But still, doesn't matter. I pretty much said all I had to say. Have a great day. I would tell you to rate, comment, and subscribe, but that's what e-begging money whores do.